What is up, Dynasty Leaguers? Welcome back into another first round rookie prospect video on my 1.08 in one quarterback leagues. If you missed any of the previous seven videos on my top three running backs and my top four wide receivers from my 101 through the 107, I invite you to go back and check those out. Otherwise, this video, we're going to be talking about one of the most electric players in this class that is not at the running back and wide receiver position, and that is Florida tight end Kyle Pitts. So let's get into it. So Kyle Pitts is the current 1.07 in newly developed March ADP over at Dynasty League Football. And he's been ranging anywhere from the 1.03 down to the 1.11, even though he can mostly be found in that seven, eight, and nine range in the first round. And then of course, in Superflex Leagues, a little bit later than that, when you add in the quarterbacks going up above Kyle Pitts. But Pitts is a pretty electric prospect. It's very polarizing as well for a tight end to go in the first round of rookie drafts specifically even in super flex drafts as he's being mocked to right now but he's definitely a very interesting and very intriguing prospect and when you look at his college stats in his three years from 2018 to 2020 it's a very interesting profile so let's get into it his freshman year three receptions 73 yards and one touchdown in only three games played he was actually 15th on his team alone in receptions mostly a special teams guy not really gonna you know, hurt too much of his profile with that under development in his freshman year. He's an 18 year old kid coming into Florida. They already don't pass a lot just in general. And you know, just being a freshman, a tight end, all that stuff just kind of all conglomerates into not a great overall freshman year. You look at his sophomore season though, 54 receptions, 646 yards and five touchdowns. This was the breakout season for Kyle Pitts. This is what put him on the map as a top tight end in the 2021 tight end class. And this is really where you saw Kyle Pitts showcase all of his strengths, all of his abilities to be a deep field threat, a red zone threat. He led the team in receptions that year and was barely behind Van Jefferson in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns, who then went on to play and is currently playing for the LA Rams. So now junior year 2020, no Van Jefferson here. Kyle Pitts really showed out 43 receptions, 770 yards and 12 touchdowns in eight games played. He actually missed three games with a concussion slash he also got no surgery from an illegal targeting hit against Georgia. And then he opted out of Florida's bowl game to prepare for the 2021 NFL draft. So he did all of that crazy production, nearly 100 yards receiving per game and over one receiving touchdown average per game in eight games. And he also did that while producing alongside wide receiver breakout Kadarius Toney, who is also being talked about as a first round pick in this year's class, even though some like myself don't necessarily agree with that. But he did break out and Kyle Trask had a pretty solid showing as well. An early Heisman favorite, even though he faded off down the stretch Speaking of Heisman, Kyle Pitts actually finished 10th in Heisman voting in 2020, which was pretty crazy to me. I did not know that. And that is actually the first time in 43 years that a tight end has cracked the top 10 in Heisman voting. So that tells you anything about what NCAA and how the Heisman voters feel about Kyle Pitts. They, you know, top 10 in Heisman voting. That's pretty solid and pretty favorable recognition for a tight end prospect in 2021. So overall, after three years in college and two fantastic years, Kyle Pitts is now a 2021 NFL tight end prospect. And so when you look and dive into analytics, and let's first talk about analytics for the tight end position, because we really haven't talked about that yet. Analytics for the tight ends position is pretty difficult, only because there's not a lot of consistency in terms of successful tight ends moving to the NFL outside of just a couple variables, just like wide receivers, we can pin down a couple significant variables for tight ends. And that's mainly size and speed combinations. You think about guys like Jimmy Graham, Rob Gronkowski, more recently Noah Fant, TJ Hawkinson, Darren Waller. These guys are huge, they're athletic, they can make awesome catches, they can get down the field, 
and they're more than just possession tight ends, more so than a Zach Ertz, Greg Olson, or a Jason Witten type player. These guys are now size, speed, combo, freak athletes just playing at the tight end position, and that's what Kyle Pitts is. So he definitely fits that mold. The other key point for tight ends is draft capital. A lot of the most successful tight ends in the NFL currently are first or second round draft picks. So when I was looking more so for Kyle Pitts analytically and how he at least comps to a lot of other successful tight ends in the NFL, what I did was filter down my data set all the way down to tight ends that have at least one top five fantasy season. I didn't want to go so low as only one top 12 tight end season because that's not really going to be a hit Basically, the league winning guys are the guys who finish in the top five, even top three specifically. You think about Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller, how amazing they were in 2020. League and roster changing type of players. With Kyle Pitts and his hype and his current rookie draft capital right now, you need him to be that type of a game changing tight end for your roster. And you need him to do it early on as well. So I compared him to a bunch of these tight ends bunch of guys who have at least one top five tight end season in the NFL, like Mark Andrews, like George Kittle, like Ertz, Kelsey, Jordan Reed, Rob Gronkowski, Jimmy Graham, even Jared Cook and Martellus Bennett back in the day in the early 2010s. And the first thing that stood out to me was, like I said, there's not a lot of consistency here outside of size, speed, combo freaks, and draft capital. I looked at college dominator rating, all these guys produced at some level in college football. The average was a 22% college dominator of these tight ends in this data set. That is actually right on point to where Kyle Pitts is. He had a 22% college dominator rating at Florida over his three years. So he hits on that perfectly. I looked at breakout age. Breakout age for tight ends can be measured at a 15 or 20% threshold unlike wide receivers that are 20 and 30 percent for tight ends it's 15 and 20. Kyle Pitts has a 19 year old 15 percent breakout age and a 20 year old 20 percent breakout age and that's pretty consistent with a lot of these other tight ends as well a whole lot not a whole lot of consistency there's guys in here with a 21 22 19 20 all these different breakout ages some of these guys didn't even have breakout ages like Kyle Rudolph Jimmy Graham Algie Crumpler, these guys didn't actually have breakout ages in college, but they're more so outliers. But you see that there's not a whole lot of consistency, but if there was, Kyle Pitts is definitely in that mold as a 19 and 20 year old breakout tight end in his second and third year in college. Definitely what you wanna see. So that's at least the analytics standpoint for Kyle Pitts. I have another point of reference to talk about for him. And this is a lot more dynasty game theory now. When we're talking about drafting a tight end in the first round of rookie drafts, we've done it before. We've done it in the past. You think about guys like OJ Howard, Evan Ingram, even more recently, Noah Fant and TJ Hawkinson were drafted and mocked in the first round of rookie mock drafts. And so that is where we see Kyle Pitts. And I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into, is that a worthwhile investment, a worthwhile pick for your dynasty rosters to take a tight end, even one as hyped up and potentially as great as Kyle Pitts and his profile, both analytically and on tape. Is that worth it in the first round, especially if you're taking him in the middle of that first round and not so much at the back end, where he might be more worth your while to take it back there. Is it more worth it in the first half of your drafts? And so I've done a little bit of research and thankfully I didn't have to do a whole lot because Drew Ozenchuk at DF Bean Counter on Twitter did a lot of this research for me already. He actually went in and looked at tight end prices in Startup Dynasty ADP and compared that from their year one to year two prices for a lot of these guys who were taken in the first round of the NFL draft and then coincidentally very highly in startup drafts as well. There's a lot of awesome names on this list. I've already mentioned Hawkinson, Fant, Howard, Ingram, David Njoku, Eric Ebron, even back to Tyler Eifert, Kobe Fleener, and Lance Kendricks. You can see a lot of these guys were drafted pretty highly in the top 100 of Dynasty One Quarterback ADP. And a lot of these guys maintained their value heading into year two, at least you know a little bit up, a little bit down, but overall they maintained their value pretty significantly. You can see actually the highest tight end on this list, OJ Howard, was drafted as the 
overall player number 70 in one quarterback leagues. So basically a sixth or seventh round pick in startup drafts. And that's what OJ Howard was being drafted as then. When you compare that to Kyle Pitts now, he's actually being taken 62nd overall, which is crazy to me that he would be potentially your fifth key cornerstone player in your startup drafts and as a rookie tight end. And that's absolutely bonkers to me. So Drew did a little bit more research. Like I said, he compared it to year two. Evan Ingram had a historically good rookie season. His ADP rose from 87 overall to 40th overall in year two. And that is the highest tight end that has ever been taken in the first or second years in startup ADP. And that is pretty crazy to me. But what that tells me is that he's not necessarily unattainable, right? He would still be a fourth round pick. Even if Kyle Pitts has an Evan Ingram level rookie tight end season, he would go from a fifth round pick to maybe a fourth or third round pick at best. So he's still attainable for those of you who want to wait and see what Kyle Pitts is going to bring to the table in the NFL and just kind of wait it out and see how it goes. What I don't want you guys to believe is that you are going to get an immediate buy low window after year one, even if Kyle Pitts doesn't produce. I don't believe that's really gonna happen. There's not gonna be a lot of cases where Kyle Pitts managers who drafted him in the first round of their rookie drafts are going to wanna sell low after one bad year, even if it's an injured season, if it's a low production season, maybe he doesn't get drafted to the right team or there's an aging veteran in front of him and he doesn't necessarily produce immediately, you won't be able to have a buy low window, in my opinion, after year one, because most of these guys at least maintain their value pretty well heading into year two in the NFL. Finally, I'd like to talk about just overall the tight end position in rookie years. We go back all the way to 2000. The top five tight end rookie seasons are Jeremy Shockey, Evan Ingram, Rob Gronkowski, John Carlson, and then Aaron Hernandez. Jeremy Shockey's best fantasy season as a rookie was 175.4 fantasy points. You compare that to what that would have been in 2020, that alone would have made him the tight end six in 2020, ahead of Mark Andrews, Mike Kosicki, Noah Fant, Gronk, Hayden Hurst, and just behind TJ Hawkinson, Logan Thomas, and Robert Tunyon, kind of in that range right there. And that was the best rookie tight end season of all time, or at least since 2000. Evan Ingram was right behind that. He still would have been the tight end six. And then after Evan Ingram was Rob Gronkowski's at 154, which would have made him the tight end eight on the year in 2020. So if that's the kind of season that we can expect, even if we're predicting Kyle Pitts to have the greatest season of all time for a tight end, he still might not even crack the top five. And maybe if he does, it still won't be that Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Darren Waller type of a historic season, at least in year one. So that at least I want to throw in there just to give you guys some sort of an estimate and expectations for what you can expect from Kyle Pitts, at least initially in year one. A lot of these guys then went on to have fantastic rest of their careers. Even, you know, Rob Gronkowski, the third best rookie tight end season of all time. Well, if you look at his 2011 season, he was, you know, a Travis Kelsey type of player. He had like a thousand yards and double digit touchdowns in 2011. So that's definitely well in the range of Kyle Pitts especially for a guy who can be so highly utilized in the red zone and inside the end zone. Just throw it to him. He's going to come down with it more times than not. And that is what Kyle Pitts can offer. But I at least wanted to throw that, like I said, to temper expectations on what you can expect from him in year one. So finally, we can get to where Kyle Pitts can land in the NFL that would make him a fantastic, viable starting tight end for your roster immediately the first team i went with was the philadelphia eagles at 1.06 this is a team that i highlighted for jamar chase devonta smith as well could be in that range but the eagles need playmakers for jalen hurts and kyle pitts could definitely do that you know that they love to run two tight end sets with dallas goddard and zach Ertz. Ertz is already being talked about being on the move even very recently potentially before this even goes live i'm recording this a couple days early Zach Ertz might already be off the roster. So that would open up a good tight end role and a good spot for Kyle Pitts to come in and be an immediate playmaker on a team that desperately needs playmakers. So the Philadelphia Eagles 
at 1.06 could be a fantastic landing spot. The next one is the Los Angeles Chargers at 13 overall. This is a team that he could immediately come in with a fantastic young quarterback and be an immediate target and red zone threat. Hunter Henry is a free agent, so he would basically be coming in and competing for targets with Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, potentially Mike Williams, even though Mike Williams is also in the final year of his deal in 2021. So it remains to be seen if he gets brought back for Kyle Pitts' second year, potentially if he gets drafted by the Chargers. That would just be a fantastic option. You pair Justin Herbert with another guy that he can target inside the red zone, as well as somebody else that he can target even between the 20s. That's not Keenan Allen. And that would be Kyle Pitts to the Los Angeles Chargers at 113. Finally, the last team is the New England Patriots at 15 overall. This is a team that definitely knows how to utilize the tight end position. We saw Bill Belichick make potentially the greatest tight end of all time in Rob Gronkowski. If he gets another player of that same mold, Kyle Pitts, 6'6", 250 pounds, he could definitely turn Pitts to being a superstar. The only question, at least currently and initially, for the New England Patriots is who is their quarterback? Is it Cam Newton? Is it Jimmy Garoppolo? Is it some rookie? Is it some other free agent? We don't really know right now, but that would be the biggest question mark, but would not be something that would inhibit me from not drafting Kyle Pitts in the mid to late first rounder if he ends up going to the New England Patriots, because I believe Bill Belichick can figure that out. And that is a team so devoid of pass catchers that it would be a fantastic opportunity for Kyle Pitts or any pass catching rookie to really come in and immediately see volume and opportunity. And like I said, Pitts could be a fantastic tight end inside the red zone. Another option for even if it's Cam Newton or Jimmy G to throw it to Kyle Pitts inside that red zone. We know that Cam Newton loved to throw it to Greg Olson back in the Carolina days. Jimmy Garoppolo has had his time with his tight ends in San Francisco. So it would really be, in my opinion, an awesome landing spot for Kyle Pitts with the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick. So that's gonna do it for today's video on Kyle Pitts, my 1.08 in one quarterback rookie drafts. Thank you all so much for watching and tuning in. Please, if you're not already, subscribe to the DLF YouTube channel, ring that notifications bell to be notified every time that a new video like this one drops or other videos that we are doing. We're doing mock drafts, we're doing more rookie content, more outside the box content like Commissioner Chronicles, Mannequin Chill, Trades, it's all coming your way through the DLF YouTube channel. So subscribe, ring that notifications bell, like this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will catch you guys next time.